What is up guys, it's San here from Crypto Kiwi. Now in this video I will be talking about gold as a historic store of value versus Bitcoin which could become uh, the next big store of value for younger and future generations and why I think this could be very very possible in the near future. So just before we start off I do want to have a quick talk about the crypto market right now. So Bitcoin sits at over 400 billion US dollars as the current market cap and the whole crypto market cap altogether including all the altcoins sits at 642 billion US dollars. As you can see it's been a very very good few weeks for Bitcoin and the crypto market overall um, with coins completely beating some of the all-time highs and on the rise so it's really really cool to see. Now there's plenty of reasons why Bitcoin is starting to get more traction this year. Now I personally believe probably one of the biggest reasons is because the economic response to the global pandemic that's been going on. For one, over in the US they've been printing and creating a lot of money this year. Not only the US, most governments have, even in New Zealand they have as well. Uh, when it th comes to things like the wage subsidy, the government just doesn't have billions and billions or even trillions of dollars just sitting in a back storage fund that they've been saving up for years for a rainy day. When poop hits the fan like it has this year, most of these governments create the money out of thin air and they do it for good reason. They do it to keep people employed. They do it to keep people fed and warm over winter and things like that and of course it works but in the long term creating so much money in such a short amount of time starts to cause issues such as possible hyperinflation and other things like that too. So as you can see in the states they've just approved another 900 billion US dollar stimulus package and that's on top of the trillions of dollars that they've already had to create this year for other stimulus packages and this is causing people to look for stores of value for their sitting cash. Not only people but large institutions and companies. Now MicroStrategy for one has been buying huge amounts of crypto, specifically Bitcoin this year alone. Uh, just recently they purchased another 650 million US dollars of Bitcoin bringing their total Bitcoin holdings as a company at 1.596 billion, so almost 1.6 billion US dollars. Uh, that comes to about 2.2, 2.3 billion New Zealand dollars is how much this company holds in Bitcoin alone. They currently have over 70,000 Bitcoins. And this company is not waiting for a dip, they're not waiting for Bitcoin to drop before they buy. Their recent purchase of $650 million was purchased at $21,925 per Bitcoin. That was the price they paid for those uh, new Bitcoins that they've just purchased. So that's a huge amount of money. Now why on earth are these companies doing this and people putting their money into stores of value? Like I said they're starting to lose trust especially this year with the amount of money that's been created by governments. It's devaluing the, the US dollar and also other currencies and people are worried about hyperinflation. Their dollar is losing its buying power as it's sitting in the bank. It's pretty much your money is just burning away as it's sitting in the bank because governments are creating so much in such a small amount of time. Now historically gold is a massive store of value. It's used by so many people and has been for such a long time. Even the US dollar used to be backed by gold. You could trade one US dollar for some gold and you'd know it would always be backed by that. You could go into any bank and trade gold for US dollars, US dollars for gold. I'm talking about 50, 60 years ago before it was changed to be backed by uh, the paper it's printed on and trust in the government. So. Uh, I know I'm rambling guys but this is pretty much an opinion piece but as you can see gold has been doing relatively well this year as well but definitely not as well as Bitcoin or crypto. Now there are definitely a few differences when it comes to both of these. Like I said before Bitcoin's market cap is about 400 billion US dollars. Gold's market cap is estimated to be at about 9 trillion US dollars. So gold has a lot more money sitting in it, it's worth more and it's much more globally used at the moment as a store of value. Now I'm going to compare the two for a quick moment so you guys can get some comparisons before I jump into the main point of this video. So we've already talked about the market cap, 9 trillion US dollars for gold, 440 billion dollars for Bitcoin. What about scarcity and supply? Now we know that gold is pretty scarce, it's not easy to find or it's not easy to actually create or, or mine out, it's not easy to gather. Basically you need big trucks, you need big tools, you need to map out areas, get land consents and everything like that. Gold is not easy to find. But there is quite a bit of gold on the earth, we actually don't know how much there is left because we can only know how much we have from what we find. Now it has been proven that there is huge amounts of gold in space, even NASA has said themselves enough to make every single person on earth an ultra billionaire. Just huge amounts of gold in space. So let's say in the next 20-30 years um, someone like SpaceX, a company like SpaceX or even NASA is able to go out to space and start mining and um, bringing gold back to earth, what's that going to do? That's going to devalue gold because there's going to be so much more in the supply. So therefore we don't actually know the total supply of gold available. 
Whereas something like Bitcoin, we know for a fact that Bitcoin's total max supply can only be 21 million Bitcoins. That's written in code, can't be changed. And we know that for a fact. And we can even go see here on several websites and even blockchain explorers that right now there's only 18.5 million in circulation. So we know that it's a scarce item. The more people that want it, the higher the value will be because it is scarce. It can only ever be 21 million in existence. And right now we're only sitting at 18.5 million in circulating supply. Now I want to jump onto one more thing here as well. Gold can be confiscated. Now I know that I might sound very, very biased with this, but history has shown that gold has been confiscated by governments. In 1933, President Roosevelt over in the States um, pretty much put through an executive order. I'm going to put it on the screen right now, as you can see here. And this executive order pretty much enforced all US citizens to sell their gold at a fixed price for US dollars to the US government. And if you fail to do so, you could uh, land yourself in prison or up to $10,000 in fines. Now, $10,000 back then was worth a lot more. So it was a lot more of a heavy penalty to what you might be thinking when it comes to $10,000. Now, why on earth did the US government do this? Well, in 1929, there was a market collapse. Um, and then there was a Great Depression that followed because of the economic downturn. And back then, like I said before, that the US dollar was backed by gold. And the government needed to create money. They needed to create more US dollars to stimulate the economy like they are doing today. But because it was backed by gold, they had to have a gold supply to create new money. They can't just create money without enough gold to do so. So the best thing that the government thought to do was to confiscate gold from all the US citizens. And then they could create more money and stimulate the economy. And it did work. But of course, they were forcing all their citizens to hand over their gold or face imprisonment or fines. So gold can be confiscated. It has been proven. When it comes to cryptocurrencies, even if your government starts to say, hey, we're going to confiscate this, we're making it illegal, they only know if you have Bitcoin, if you have made it transparent to them, if they know, if they have records or you've told people. Bitcoin is pseudo-anonymous. People only know if you have it, if you tell people. They'll, that's the only way that they can tell if you have it. They don't know how much you have unless you give them your wallet address or you show them yourself. If you just keep your lips sealed completely about your involvement in crypto, nobody has to know, nobody could know, especially if you cover your tracks quite well. Therefore, it can't be confiscated. Even then, they have to have your private keys. They can't just storm your house, break into your vault. Oh, here, you know, here's your block of gold. Walk out with it. Bitcoin is not a physical object, so therefore it can't be stolen unless you hand over the information to access it. Now, that is an arguing point for people that are pro-gold, especially older generations. They say that, well, Bitcoin, there's no physical aspect. How does it have intrinsic or physical value? Whereas gold, I do have something physical in my hand that I can hold, um, and therefore it is worth so much more because it has a physical backing. And that moves into my next point. Now, this is the main point of this video, guys, that I have wanted to talk about. I know that I'm rambling, but if you made it this far, good on you. Um, and if you do disagree with any of my points, feel free to argue them down below in the comments. So if you guys haven't heard about the great wealth transfer, this is something that interests me uh, very, very much. I believe this could be a huge push for cryptocurrencies, be it Bitcoin, Ethereum, or maybe a new currency that starts up in the coming years that um, grabs the attention of a lot of people. So if you haven't heard about this, I'm going to give you guys a quick brief rundown from Forbes. Over the next two decades, the United States will experience an unprecedented shift of demographics and finances that will likely be felt by every American. Baby boomers, the generation of people born between 1944 and 1964, are expected to transfer 30 trillion US dollars in wealth, which is about 45 trillion New Zealand dollars, to younger generations over the next many years. Uh, this jaw-dropping amount has led many journalists and financial experts to refer to this event as the Great Wealth Transfer. Now, this isn't just going to take place in the States. This is going to take place in pretty much every Western country uh, that runs off the same economic model as the United States. So here in New Zealand, most of the property or the money sitting in property investments is held up by baby boomers because they're the ones that have been able to purchase it over the years at cheaper prices. Uh, they've worked jobs for 30 years, worked their way up to higher incomes and things like that. So it just makes sense. Now, when these baby boomers and these older generations do pass on, they will pass down the inheritance money to younger generations. And now when you think about it, when it comes to a store of value, do you think a younger generation will be looking at something traditional, something that's physical like gold, like I said before, where it's been proven that governments can confiscate it and they will when they need to? Um, where it's a physical object where you actually have to store it or pay a bank or a vault somewhere to safely store it um, and it can be stolen if you don't have it safely stored somewhere. Of course I'm biased like I said but I'm trying to give you guys the rough idea of what I'm trying to say. 
Or do you think younger people, younger generations that are brought up around technology, they've been brought up around the smartphone, things like Netflix, Spotify, Uber, things that have completely changed industries, do you think they're going to be looking for something traditional like gold for a store value with all this money that's been handed down to them? Or do you think they're going to look at something that's more suitable to their needs, something that they can buy, access, sell, swap, exchange, send to people instantly through their phone as long as they have an internet connection or a laptop anywhere in the world? That's something like Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency. These things are creating new new ways for people to look at how they work with their money, how they store their money and how they store um, their value basically and now personally I think that the great wealth transfer over the coming years could be a huge push for something like Bitcoin like I said younger generations are going to show more interest in something that they can access through their phone that they're used to on demand they don't have to wait for anyone else they can just do it whenever they want they've got full access they're in full control that is something that is going to be much more attractive to younger generations as they gain the great wealth transfer money from their grandparents or parents that they're inherited down to them they're going to probably start selling some of those assets and putting it into things that they prefer and personally I do see if mass adoption starts to take place more and more over the coming years Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency maybe there's a, a cryptocurrency or a new invention that hasn't come out yet that will surpass this for this specific reason but I personally see this has been a huge push and could possibly create Bitcoin uh, or a, another cryptocurrency to become the next big store of value for the coming decades. Now like I said at the start of this video gold has a market cap of 9 trillion. The total market cap for crypto is only 600 billion dollars. Therefore we are quite a way off from surpassing gold as a to like as in total value or a store of value for people's money. So for us to see Bitcoin at the same value as gold as a market cap, Bitcoin would have to go at least 10 to 15x at least just to be able to reach that same market cap in value. Now I'm going to wrap this video up here guys. Thanks for watching. I know it's been a bit of a long video. It's been a bit of a rant or opinion piece. This is something that's been on my mind for a while and I'm not the only person that does think of a lot of this kind of stuff um, and I've come across a few different people on YouTube, both authors of books and just YouTubers where they've talked about the great wealth transfer and how that relates to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in the coming decades. Younger people inheriting a lot of money will be looking for new industries, new technologies, things that suit them and the way that they've been brought up around smartphones and the internet rather than traditional financial investments such as gold and stocks and shares and things like that. So this could be a huge moving point for cryptocurrencies in the coming decades. Now if you did enjoy this video please press the like button definitely helps and I appreciate it a lot. If you haven't already do subscribe to the channel bringing out more and more videos in the coming weeks. It's just been a very very hectic few weeks for me at the moment therefore there has been the odd delay uh, but like I said at the start of this video and in the middle if you want to debate anything I've said or you want to give your opinion do so down in the comments. I do love reading them and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Now my name is San from Crypto Kiwi. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.